Hello, greetings and welcome. Whatever time of day it is for you, listeners, it is my pleasure to share with you this afternoon. And my topic for presentation is the impact of maladies on physical health. I am Dr. Sidian Brady Brown, and I am located at NADS Family Healthcare in Greenacre, St. Catherine. That's where we have a medical practice that caters to all your family needs. There we provide medical, dental, physiotherapy, ultrasound, and specialty services to meet your needs. It is my pleasure to have this opportunity to share with you this afternoon as we d delve into the topic of the impact of maladies on our physical health. Now, just for us to have an understanding of what we're talking about, we need to understand exactly what is a malady. Now, a malady by definition is a disease or ailment. And dictionary.com also describes it as an undesirable or disordered condition or a disease of the body, especially one that is chronic or deep-seated. Now, what exactly is health? Since it's going to impact our health, we need to have an understanding of what health is. And health, according to the World Health Organization, is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or illness or infirmity. So, healthy body, healthy mind come together with healthy social scenarios to create a healthy individual. So, of course, it's understandable that a malady is something that would disrupt our health. And having a disease or any disorder will mean that your physical health would be negatively impacted. But what most of us tend to miss is exactly how a mental malady or a mental disease or illness will or can impact our physical health. And that's what we'll be delving in this afternoon. So the impact of physical maladies, of mental maladies, sorry, on physical health. You know, mental health, together with the physical health, creates a healthy individual overall. 3 John 1 verse 2 says, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you even as your soul is getting along well. So even by biblical definition, health is not just a physical state, but it also involves our mental or, and our soul as well. So mental disorder or malady as a whole, they are characterized as conditions that affect our mood, our thinking, and of course, our behavior. And these or disorders may go on to affect our daily lives. And that's the time that it actually becomes a disease or what we call something that's pathological. Now, exactly who is affected by mental disorders? And this is very interesting to know. You know, mental illness is extremely common worldwide as common as one in every eight persons live with a mental disorder. Do you realize that that accounts for over 970 million people around the world who suffer with one or more mental illnesses? And that is coming from the World Health Organization. And of course, we must bear in mind that the data from WHO would be what is recorded. There are many other illnesses that go unrecorded for many different reasons. If you believe that you are suffering from a mental disorder or illness, believe me, you are not alone, far from being alone. The truth is that the most common mental disorders can be characterized under the headings of anxiety and depressive disorders. And let me just give you a little data to help you to understand exactly what we're talking about. In 2020, the number of people living with anxiety and depressive disorder rose significantly because of the COVID-19 pandemic. It is reported that numbers rose by 26% for anxiety and about 28% for depressive disorder. Anxiety disorder, what exactly is that? Many of us throw that term around very loosely, but anxiety disorder is characterized by excessive fear, and worry and related behavioral changes in response to this feeling. In 2019, 301 million people, and of course, 58 million children and adolescents, because we can't leave them out of our data, 
were diagnosed with anxiety disorder. And this, these are the cases that are reported. And I'm sure we can all attest that we know at least one person who suffers from anxiety disorder that most of us at one point or another believe that we may, depending on what may have been happening to us, experiencing anxiety to a point where it has affected our behavior. Depression is characterized by a depressed mood, sad, feeling irritable, loss of pleasure or interest in activities for most of the day or nearly every day for at least two weeks. So to meet the, the definition for depression, these feelings, sadness, irritability, emptiness, or loss of pleasure in most or all activities must occur for most of the day for nearly every day for at least two weeks for it to meet the definition. In 2019, 280 million people, and of that number, 23 million children and adolescents were diagnosed with depressive disorder. Very, very common. And it's important for us to know that, you know, this is different from the usual mood fluctuations and short-lived emotional responses that we may experience because of the challenges of everyday life. As you see, the definition has most days, um, almost all of the days, most days for a duration of two weeks or longer. Now, there are several symptoms that may present with depressive disorder, and this includes poor concentration, feelings of excessive guilt or low self-worth or hopelessness about the future. It may go as far as thoughts of suicide and dying, it may result in disrupted sleep or changes in appetite or weight, feeling especially tired or low energy because of the mood that you're in almost all the time. There are other mental disorders. Some of these that I'm about to mention are, are a little bit more common. So we are aware of, for example, the bipolar disorder. And this occurs when we have alternating depressive episodes with episodes of mania or manic. And manic symptoms may include periods of excitement and euphoria. Sometimes it may be related to irritability as well, with increased energy or activity. Um, and uh, bipolar symptoms may, may be associated with stuff such as increased talkativeness, racing thoughts, increased self-esteem, decreased need for sleep or food, um, these patients may become impulsive or they're easily distractible. Um, and then this tends to alternate with having depressive symptoms. So you're either in mania or euphoria or depression. In 2019, about 40 million people were diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Post-COVID-19, we've had an increase in our numbers of post-traumatic stress disorder. And these are disorders that develop following exposure to extremely life-threatening or horrific events. And most times we have no control over this, right? And what you find happening is that the, the patient tends to keep re-experiencing the traumatic events. They have constant flashbacks and memories or even nightmares that is disruptive to their ability to function. You may find that they have avoidance of thoughts or memories or events or activities or even people or places. And these persons tend to have heightened perception of, of, of threats. So they're always afraid because they believe that something dangerous is imminent or is about to happen. Other common mental disorders, words we hear thrown about schizophrenia, it's characterized by a significant impairment in perceptions and changes in behavior. So symptoms may include persistent delusions or hallucinations, disorganized thoughts and thinking, um, or extreme agitation. And in 2019, it was reported that um, one in every 300 persons or more than 24 million people had been diagnosed with schizophrenia. Other disorders, eating disorders, are some of the other disorders that we come across. Eating disorders, we look out especially for in our teens and adolescents, but also happens with adults. For example, our anorexia nervosa and bulimia. And these involve abnormal eating or preoccupation with food or body weight or shape. 
in 2019, 14 million people experienced eating disorder. And this include almost this number included almost 3 million children and adolescents. So there are many mental disorders. And I could go on and on and on dis discussing them. Disruptive behaviors, the social disorders, substance abuse, neurodevelopmental disorders, ADHD, um, autism spectrum disorders, there are many. But the truth is that these disorders are any and everywhere. And for that reason, any and everybody can be affected. And it doesn't have to be something that you did that brought it on. A family history of mental illness, you have no control over that. Stressful life situations, none of us are immune to these things. Chronic medical conditions, long-term illnesses, these things put us at risk for mental disorders. Brain damage that results because of an accident or trauma, you have no control over that. Traumatic experiences are often imposed on us, we have nothing to do with that. A childhood history of neglect or abuse, this is not something you invited into your life, this is something that happened to you or any previous mental illness. So the truth is that we are all at risk for mental disorders and we also know that there is no health without mental health. Um, and for these reasons, there are many associations between mental health and physical health. And that is just a teaser for you just to let you understand exactly what a mental disorder is, to expound on the fact that they are many and varied and that none of us are immune. A mental disorder can happen to you, it can happen to me, it can happen to any of us at any time because of circumstances that most times are extrinsic to us. We have no control. And for that reason, it is my, my, my desire to share with you just how common these things are so that we can have an understanding and we don't ostracize and isolate each other. Tune in with me at our next session where we'll delve more into an understanding about how mental disorders affect our physical health. Thank you.